You would have thought after a few weeks break that it would have been a good idea just to ease myself back into it. I haven't taken a photograph for what about two or three weeks, so go to a location where it's nice and simple. No, not me. I'm presented with silver birch, frost, an absolute mishmash and chaos. But it's up to me to organise something into a decent photograph. Let's see how I get on. So I've opted to go close. Just can't find any background to lead the eye on. Plenty of foreground, some lovely frost on the bracken. So just to get my eye in after my short break, I've opted to go close and just work with the patterns of the bracken. Wide angle, manual focus, quick enough shot speed just ensure what I want to be sharp is sharp. I just work in the patterns in the frame. Yeah, it's a struggle. It's absolutely beautiful conditions, which is typical, but as you know, beautiful conditions that often lead to a good photograph. I'll carry on. frustrating for me is the location where I am it's, it's so photogenic I, you've got the right elements as I said before you've got the frost uh, a nice bronze bracken silver birch the problem is is getting a decent composition I'm going I was going to say getting too selective perhaps I am I'm getting selective that is for sure and it begs the question, am I just trying to follow the rules of composition rather than just going with my heart and just taking what I feel is right? It's a nice question, it really is. I think as I've gained experience as a landscape photography, in landscape photography, I learn, I've learnt what works and what doesn't. But this moment in time, it's been a bit of a hindrance because I just can't find anything. No, no separation, no foreground which blends nicely with the background. And the problem is, as well, is I'm working with time because the sun is out and the frost is melting as I speak. So I haven't given up, I'm still here, still searching. I have found something um, using the nice patterns and textures of the firm, the nice bit of frost on. On this occasion it nicely leads up to the uh, branches of silver birch just to help balance the composition. I focused about a, what, midway in the image, focus on the frost itself before it melts and I've just managed to capture the light hitting the fern, create some nice contrast between the fern and also the silver birch as well. I've purposely excluded the sky because that was an element that didn't really work, it would have caused a bit of a distraction to the eye. So I think this works. There's something behind me as well. 
I'm going to explore. I'm getting into it. I'm getting into it. All is not lost. Things are definitely getting better and looking up. I'm slowly getting, getting into it here. Basically what I'm doing is following the light. The light on this occasion is catching the foreground bracket with its lovely natural leading lines, lovely textures, bronze colours. On this occasion I'm also intentionally including the sky and the top of the larch tree which complements the overall balance because that again has some lovely bronze colours with the light hitting it portrait orientation because we're working with verticals um, yeah I'm liking this as well things are looking up there's also something behind me as well wandered further from where I was before and there's definitely a scene here I'm gonna show you what I'm looking at um, with my other video camera I'm continually continued continue continue to be attracted by the frost on the fern and I'm just looking for a, a background some nice gnarly twisted trees. Just want to balance that. But this is the scene. This is the background which I'm looking at here. Uh, see some nice gnarly trees. See the top of the grasses as well, nicely, nicely hit by the light. Just going to work this area. It's quite a small area as well. I'm not going to leave until I find something that appeals to me. Just having a well-earned break. Just had a coffee, something to eat. I've fired off a few shots with my telephoto, handheld. Uh, trying to frame some decent compositions and lovely gnarly trees. Uh, the, the problem I've got at the moment is there's a band of light in the background. The question is whether to include that or not. It's quite distracting, so at this moment in time I'm probably not going there. Um, well, I'm going to try again shortly with my 16 to 35 millimeter. I just want to uh, discuss a conversation I had with Greg Witten, a landscape photographer, very good a landscape photographer, and someone I had the pleasure in meeting earlier this year in Snowdonia and, and he was he was talking on Twitter about the um, the need really of tips vlogs and his point was I made some notes um, there's a certain type of photo that follows certain types of rules or rules which are aesthetically pleasing and generally favoured by the majority but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's lesser in that sense it just means it's different it's a great point absolutely great point uh, my argument to that is surely as a landscape photographer we have to follow certain rules do we or do we not it's good to learn the basics uh, Rule of thirds, uh, the um, importance of taking things out of the frame which are distracting, checking your borders, checking your dark areas, checking your light areas, good balance, and it's all it all works for me. Um, basically, what Greg did 
it showed me three photos all average looking photos in my opinion how I was wrong they're all photos from very well acclaimed photographers one of them was Ansel Adams and his Greg's point was that they're not perfectly um, correct in terms of follow the landscape photography guide but at this moment at that moment in time the photographer had something in mind at the moment in time it pleased them um, so yeah, the problem with tips going back to what Greg was saying is that they betray the art in many ways they have one person's view of what is right and what is wrong but in that there's no wrong tips are okay well, it should come with a caveat. Interesting comments as well. My question is, when you're critiquing, as Greg does, who are you critiquing for? Are you critiquing for yourself, for the photographer, or for the masses? What do you think? Should we follow general rules of a landscape photographer? Or should we just go out liberal as art is there's no right and there is no wrong surely though you know when a landscape for photograph looks good but it doesn't look good what do you think landscape photography like any other art sense is subjective I understand that however I think it's important not to hide behind that we should all aim to learn where possible through critique feedback etc but the most important person to like or not to like that photograph is the person who's taking it that's you That's it. Final shot of the day. Bracketed. It's quite a lot of uh, dynamic range in this shot. Simple. Langdale Pikes in the background. I've focused on those. Uh, I'm using the wiggly worms of the silver birch branches as a nice frame. It works. Simple. Telephoto. Portrait orientation. You either like it or you don't. So, that's it. End of this session, nice little session since my return of no photography last few weeks. Um, been busy, co-hosted a workshop with my good friend Chris Sale here where I am now. Very successful, hoping to do a lot more in the future. Anyway, until next time, keep smiling, take good care of yourself. Bye bye for now.